When it comes to manipulating the saturation within an image, I actually don't recommend starting with the saturation tool. The reason is that it actually limits its functionality while introducing way more functionality than you actually need at this point. Rather, I'm going to recommend what's called Vibrance. And the Vibrance tool is right here inside of the adjustment palette, this upside down triangle. You can also find it up under this black and white circle down here as Vibrance. You could also find it up under Layer, New Adjustment Layer, Vibrance. Now each of those is the exact same thing that will create an adjustment layer for you so that you can modify this change at a later point in time. It's working non-destructively. There is one more way that you can find Vibrance. However, I'm going to recommend you don't do that, which is under Image Adjustments, Vibrance. Now the reason I don't recommend you use this one is because it is damaging to the image and once you use this you can't go back to it at a later point in time. It physically alters the pixels and that's that. So by doing it one of the other three ways, for example using the adjustment palette which is under window adjustments, I can click on the adjustment of vibrance and by using this one instead inside of the properties palette it will show us that we have vibrance and saturation. Now these are just simple sliders of either more saturation or less saturation. So very simply and quickly, I can take the saturation and bring it this way and simply pull out all of the color, effectively making this image black and white. Or I can move it in the other direction and put all the saturation into it, basically making the image go nuclear and have really whacked out colors. Generally when being used we simply want to pick something that helps the image but doesn't push it too far along and call it a day. Now there is vibrance and saturation as two different options. Now I chose this example because it has extreme blues as well as extreme reds and yellows. And this image is going to allow me to show you the extremes of what vibrance and saturation are capable of doing. By definition, vibrance is going to affect the weakest colors and saturation is going to affect all colors equally. However, under smaller moves and more controlled situations, you'll find that vibrance affects the cools before it affects the warms and saturation affects the warms before it affects the cools. So let me show you. If I take vibrance and I push this up, what is the first part that starts to go? Well, clearly these blues and purples. And when I grab saturation, what's the first to go? Well, it's the warms. It's the yellows and the reds. And because the green has so much yellow in it, that's being pushed as well. If you continue to go up, yes, it grabs the cools as well, which are the blues in the background. However, you really have to start pushing it before it starts grabbing those. And that's my point. So if you wanted to alter the warms in this particular image, simply pull up the saturation a little bit, and call it a day. If you want to push the warms further and that starts pulling the blues, well you can grab vibrance and pull the vibrance down. So by doing it this way, you're enhancing the colors by boosting the warms, but since we're grabbing some of the blues, we can pull the vibrance down as well. So this is kind of a balance that you're trying to create between these two sliders. If you want to see how the adjustment layer is affecting the image, you can click on this little eye icon right here and show and hide the effect. And because there's only two sliders, it's very easy to use. If you would like to learn more about Adobe Photoshop, I have a basic one course that I teach, and it includes everything that you need to make you a better photo retoucher.